Hey, what's up you guys? It's Elise and I'm back with another video. Yes, I am doing two videos in the same week. Hopefully it gets, you know, uploaded tonight, but we're gonna see. So, how are you guys? How are you doing? Of course, today, as you can see by the title, I'm gonna talk about my favorite books that I've read in 2021. So, please stay tuned because I'm going to cover a whole bunch. And like I said, it's going to be um, very, very uh, out of order and very chaotic. So, just bear with me. I mean well when I recommend these books and I hope that you would like to, you know, check them out. And please comment down below what your favorite books that you've read in 2021. So let's get started with this video. Okay, so the first book that I want to talk about is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Now, um, if you have known for a while, it has actually come out as a Netflix movie starring Sydney Park. If you don't know who Sydney Park is, just remember the cute little girl that was on That's a Raven when she was a sunshine girl and a Raven's little sister in those cute little episodes. So that is Sydney Park, but she plays a young lady named Makani Young that moves to Nebraska to be with her grandmother after a very very big and deep secret happened to her back in her home in Hawaii and she just lives her life there but as you can see there's someone inside your house so that means that there's a killer on the loose and so she and her friends are trying to figure out what is going on and why people are like killing folks in the town because obviously she's a high school student and she's just you know just trying to have a normal life from based off what she was dealing with and why things are happening and so even with the movie like I did like how they portrayed the movie because in the movie I don't think it touched uh, touched that basis or like had like that kind of twist in the book but um each uh, like the killer every time he would kill someone would wear a mask of the face of the person that they're going to kill and so, I mean, obviously that would that would take a lot of, you know, a lot of thought to do. So obviously I guess they did that for cinematic purposes. But I really, really enjoyed this book. This kind of solidified, like, the start of me reading again in 2021. Especially where, where a place that I was working. I was working at Old Navy at the time. So um, at the time, especially since that place was like an area as to where I, I was working at, there was a bookstore down there. So I was just like, hmm. Well, let me just let me just go in there and see how it is. And then here comes me buying 60 plus books that you see on my shelf. But once again, I do recommend this story. This is a really, really good story. It's a thriller, mystery, suspenseful type thing. And I really enjoyed it. I think I read it back in March of 2021, I believe. But um, I read it and I loved it. So I hope to see more murder mysteries with uh with stephanie perkins i did read the woods are always watching when it first came out it wasn't my favorite but i do 100 percent recommend this one alrighty so the second book that i recommend is they both die at the end by adam silvera and this story really took me by surprise as to how it was written i've never actually read a two-person point of view well it has multiple uh, point of views in this book but I've never actually written that until I got to Colleen Hoover but um this story is a unique uh story basically there it's this world like this not dystopian necessarily but it's more so like a you know like it's something it's something that you wouldn't see in a in this world or this day and age but this company called Deathcast called these two characters the main characters Mateo and Rufus calling them to telling uh, to tell them that they are going to die in 24 hours and so they meet on a website called last friends and they just spend the day together and to be honest like i couldn't help but fall in love with the characters i loved both mateo and rufus i don't know really which one i loved the most but definitely how the story ended up working uh working its way through i really wish that they had more time and i'd ugh, I don't want to give away the story obviously but I mean like as you can see but um, I really wish that they had more time and I wish I had more time with these characters because how it was done how it was executed you couldn't help but like your heart would go out towards the both of these characters and it was just the simple fact that um they met at a very very perfect time it was almost as if they knew each other for their whole entire lifetimes and just how it was executed i really really loved and enjoyed this story and i really wish that there was like maybe a like a backstory maybe i don't know but um i wanted to learn more about them especially rufus because rufus had a interesting life 
um they do um like specify their like with the books that this is well this is lgbt so they did go in depth about uh about their lives and uh, how how they lived them really but if i can read this again and plus i listened to it on audible and so i learned like well i heard all of the different point of views that makes two that makes two books that are okay well, I've read two books on Audible where it had multiple uh, uh, point of views, but I am very, very grateful that this is a part of my top 2021 reads. <laughs> Alright, so the third book I want to talk about is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is actually my first, my very, very first Coho book that I've read, and I read this book in four days. I was definitely captivated. I was glued. I don't know. I just was, like, pulled into this story. It was, like amazing to be honest and of course like i said before when i briefly talked about it ends with us please check the trigger warnings because it does mention things about domestic violence and i don't want anybody to you know feel um overwhelmed by it so i would definitely just look it up but it follows the story of lily who recently lost her father and is just trying to navigate life because her father wasn't necessarily the greatest to her or just the greatest to anyone in general um and then she meets uh this guy named ryle on his i think it was his apartment top and they just kind of talked and so they ended up fall falling in love but also when uh back when i tell you the whole you know two-person point of view type thing it goes from the future and the past with this one and I always thought that that was very very interesting so it's basically like she keeps around a diary to where she's like metaphorically talking to Ellen DeGeneres and this is her back in high school it tells a story about how she met this boy named, uh, named Atlas and fell in love with him Atlas was a homeless boy that she kind of took in but she knew that um, he went to her school and she was like she had a crush on him it was just one of those high school crushes and she really just wanted to help him out because i mean you gotta read the story but you gotta see like how that was uh executed and basically her and ryle get together but then she meets atlas again and it just spirals basically the whole the whole story itself was um an interesting it was just like an interesting take because of the uh past present point of view type thing but i do enjoy what i what i did read um Colleen likes to put like small little plot twists in books and I was taken aback with this one. I was, I mean, well not necessarily, it wasn't like necessarily like the like the biggest one, but due to, the, due to the circumstances in which Lily was dealing with, obviously it took her by surprise. So I do recommend this book 100%. Um, definitely recommend all the It Ends With Us, well, <laughs> all of the Colleen Hoover books. I just, I just, I love her. She's great. And I'm really surprised as to how in great shape this is. Maybe it's because I did read it in four days, but like my other books, they're beat up. So <laughs> I'm proud of myself for actually um, not beating this one up. So, all right. So I think the fourth book <laughs> is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. So um, <laughs> when it comes towards this book, I swear I was not expecting what I was expecting. Basically these two characters named Misha and Ryan were paired together as pen pals. They had this class assignment where they just were talking to like you know like somebody from I guess the same area or like I think it was like a different area like please forgive me I, read th I think I read this back in like September so it's been a minute and um when I was working at the bookstore at the time I sn I snatched it because I was just like I need to read this book and everybody's talking about it on YouTube so I need to get a part of this but they are pen pals that um you know just talk to each other send each other letters that kind of thing but obviously you move on to high school so they just never stop writing to each other but their um deal was that they were never to meet each other in person only to find out that <laughs> misha ends up going to ryan's school and misha ends up finding out ryan really quickly and let's let me do preface because um their names uh well Misha is not uh, Misha is not Misha's name. I did forget what his name actually is, but Ryan is her actual name. So Ryan is the girl, Misha is the guy, 
and they thought they were, you know, doing it with like same gender. So um, basically, thought it was two guys, but it's Brian's a girl. But um, I really like this book because it reminds you a lot of Wattpad. <laughs> and don't look at me like that. I um, had a very, very big Wattpad phase in my end of middle school and uh, early, well, practically all of my high school, um, just high school schooling, I guess. I loved that stuff. I loved Wattpad. But so this is very wattpad -ish. And the stuff that is in it, <laughs> if you are under 18, please don't. Please don't. Please do not. Because <laughs> even when I brought this to work, <laughs> And I know people who are looking at me who have read Poem 57, they're like, girl, you brought this to work? Yeah, I know, because I had no idea what was in it. Yeah, but um, I do 100% recommend reading this book. And of course, you you understand what the punk in the 57 means if you read it. So I highly suggest that you read this book. It was really good. And I didn't want to go into depth with this because half, <laughs> really, half is, I don't necessarily remember it but I knew it made an impact on me. But um, the also the other half is that like, since the story has like several stories or several like passageways through this whole giant book itself, if I give away the whole thing, then I'll give away the whole story. So please read Punk 57. All right, so the fifth book on this list is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. So Miles and Tate, Tate and Miles. Tate is a nurse. And Miles is a pilot. They meet because her brother is his one of his best friends. And I'm also going to get in depth with um, one of the other books because it does tie into this book. So if you read this book, please read Ugly Love first. And then when I get to the other book, I will sp express that you read this book before you read that one. But basically, Miles and Tate have this agreement that they are going to be nothing but friends with benefits and that's just gonna be it no strings attached no love no attraction no like major attraction and that is just gonna be it until Tate falls in love with Miles but Miles has a dark past and how they met especially the first I think it's like the first two chapters how they met it was kind of interesting because you saw a different side of Miles and it was a specific day and a specific time and 100% I do recommend reading this book. I also do say like as far as like with Colleen Hoover's um, content please like use your own discretion. Obviously if you are a person that is under 18 and you have no business reading something like this please don't even though I can't tell you what to do but <laughs> please be mindful especially don't bring these kinds of books to school just like <laughs> that's your big sister <laughs> big sister at least don't bring some, these kinds of books to school but yeah I think that's really all you need to know but they are friends with benefits and then it does get complicated and the love gets ugly I had to be cheesy I'm so sorry but yes definitely ugly love by Colleen Hoover <laughs> Alright, so the sixth book that I recommend is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I must say, Miss Taylor Jenkins Reid, this being my first Taylor Jenkins Reid book, I really, really loved it. Everything about it was just something beautiful. It was just eloquently written. And I do speak highly about this author, so I really do like her. I like Colleen Hoover, I like Penelope Douglas, I love Stephanie Perkins too, but like when you read a Taylor Jenkins Reid novel, it's kind of like you gotta sit down and just kind of not necessarily like analyze it to like to like the fullest extent, but definitely read a read a read a TJR book. It will keep you in. <laughs> but basically Evelyn Hugo is this world renowned famous actor and she wants her story to be basically wants somebody to write her story so she finds this journalist editor named Monique Grant and um, she wants her to tell her whole story and so it's kind of also like a like a dual like past present type thing so we learn about uh, Evelyn's seven husbands and we learn about her life and how she lived it and to be honest I've never seen a book kind of like this before 
if you think about a book like this, to be honest, I kind of want to see it on the big screen because I'm curious as to who will play Evelyn Hugo and who will be just the whole premise of, you know, well, who would be the the face of it? Because obviously, if you're going to uh, choose a very, very powerful Latina actor, you have to choose like somebody that is going to, you know, deliver like such a such a great legacy, such a great story. So I definitely would say that you should read it and of course since it is like about her seven husbands and like her life as well I can't really go into depth be without telling the story just know that she lived a very very long and beautiful life and how they how how it was executed how um, Miss Taylor Jenkins Reid executed this whole novel I think it was beautifully and eloquently written and I will not stop talking about or raving about this book it was a great great read and yeah this is actually my second copy i lost my first copy <laughs> i lost my first copy at a at an nail salon i was bitter but i went the next day and went and got the, that coffee uh copy and well this copy and my uh my bookmark that went with it so yeah definitely seven husbands <laughs> all right and the last book of this is november 9 by colleen hoover um okay since I do love all the Colleen Hoover books, and um, technically I should have put another Colleen Hoover book, I'll just put that as an honorable mention because I technically read it in 2021, but I don't necessarily know when I like I finished it because I think I finished it like when the clock strike uh, strike midnight. But yeah, we're gonna put that one as an honorable mention. But this one is the last book that I did read that made a big impact on my life. Oh my God. November 9 by Colleen Hoover and to be honest I I hope that I don't read her whole entire like books because I, it's just books that you just don't want to you know you want to read again but the thing is you already know what's happening you already know what's going on you know the the emotions and the feeling that you're going to deal with but it ain't it ain't nothing like the first time reading it like but okay this story basically is a story where Fallon meets this guy named Ben on accident. Basically, Fallon has met her father at a um, a restaurant, and they are having like just the worst time, just arguing with each other, having issues with each other, and um, basically, I think the father makes some weird remark about how she's never had a boyfriend or has never been in a relationship, and Ben just kind of steps in like, "Oh, sorry, I'm late. You know, um, this is this is me, blase blase." And then on that day, ironically, it was November 9th. So basically, Fallon is an actor and a very, very terrible accident happened to her to, to cause her to have third degree burns, I think, across the left side of her body. And she just can't act anymore. She used to be on a popular show in which she had to be replaced because of the like just the healing and just how how bad the injuries were. And Ben is a writer, so they both meet uh, each other, and they both meet each other. And Fallon is made up in her mind that she is going to move to New York and she's going to live her life there. And so they meet in the most inconvenient time because they both end up really liking each other. So they made this pact that every year on November 9th they're going to meet each other. But at the same time they cannot have any more contact other than November 9th. Now I keep saying November 9th but it's November 9 obviously. So this story, this story really, I okay this story had like a very very great impact on me because of the fact of how it was executed and um i just i really wish that i could just read this for the first time again like 100 percent, i do recommend this I, every part about it i i really really enjoyed it like i said i love colleen hoover i love her as a writer she is very very great she's a queen oh my gosh but um this one like as far as like a favorite colleen hoover book um other than the the honorable mention that i'm going to uh talk about this one definitely had left a big, you know, a big impact on my heart. <laughs> I went back to work, but like, especially, and I remember telling my, uh, one of my uh, HR uh, representatives that like, this one broke me and I'm not going to be okay for the rest of the day. And she was just like, okay. 
<laughs> but yeah, 100% do recommend this. Um, don't want to go into depth, but please, please read this book. <sighs> and it took me a while for me to read this because I got so busy. I went, I mean, I was working, so I was just trying to, you know, get through it. And so one day I just spent on my off day. I'm like, I'm going to read this book and I'm going to get it done. It's going to be okay. And then I nearly cried. So <laughs> please, for me, read the book. <laughs> November 9th. All right, so my honorable mention for my 2021 favorite reads, um, favorite books, is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Okay, I did not actually expect me expect myself to um, annotate it. I necessarily I didn't necessarily annotate. I'm more so highlighted some favorite parts and things that I like, things that made me shocked, things that made me be like, oh, okay, you know, this is what this is going on, things that made me sad, th those kinds of things. So, this book took me for a ride. And when I tell you, please read the trigger warnings for this, because this is one of her romance thriller-like books. And to be honest, this is the most in-depth I've ever seen her writing go. So, people that are under 18... Babies, no, do not bring this to school. Okay, okay, yeah. So it follows the story about Loen. Loen is a struggling author and is trying to make her big break, but her books are kind of just not falling flat. I mean, falling, well, they're not getting up there, like to say the least. Executing the, the things that she wants, basically. And so, so she one day has to meet her editor and she is given this proposition basically this lump sum amount of money to finish this series for this world-renowned best-selling author named Verity. Now Verity had an accident to where she is mute and she's not paralyzed or anything but she did have a car accident and she is mute and she cannot continue the story at all and um, the people that she meets is her husband Verity's husband Jeremy and so basically she goes in and moves into their home to read all of her her notes her paperwork her files and all that stuff just to figure out how to finish up the story so when she finishes the story she gets a pretty big chunk of change but i mean if you if you read the book you know if you know you know but basically um jeremy to tells the story of his family and how they met and how they are um how they are a family and how they became to be. But now Loen is not so sure about Verity. She was introduced to Verity by Jer uh, Jeremy, but she don't feel too right about her. And something about her is, something about Loen thinks that she's lying. She's lying about something. She's lying about something very, very deep. And that is when she finds her personal memoir like, it's not necessarily an autobiography, but it's a memoir about Verity's life. And Loen is taken aback at how much she has said and she has done about the people in her lives and the people that she deals with every day. And I do say, obviously, that this is a thriller. And I would check trigger warnings with this one as well because it does mention a, a couple things. But this one goes into depth. It does. And I was like, oh, okay, I did not know what I was reading. And to be honest, this book sat on my shelf for at least two months. I was just happy to get the book in my hands. And then I read it the last few weeks, uh, well, the last few days uh, before the 2021 came to a close when I had COVID. I finished it and I was just like, <laughs> whoa. So, of course, with that, please check it out. Please check it out. This was a this was a great read. And like I said, like I have like four unread Colleen Hoover books on my shelf right now. And I'm dreading reading them because I want more and more and more and more Colleen Hoover books. But it's okay. I'm gonna when I get reminders of him, yeah, or yeah, reminders of him. It's a new book that came out at like a couple couple days ago, like maybe a week and a half ago. Once I get that book, I'm reading it. Or I'm at least reading the ones that are on my shelf. <laughs> Alright, so I thank you all so much for watching my video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate all of you, and I think I'm gonna do pretty well with making these book reviews. I'm gonna try and start doing things like um, 
like reading vlogs and all those things like okay but my attention span my attention span is like a three-year-old so I'm just gonna try and do it one day and I'm going to make it my I don't know absolute just uh, effort to do that so yeah <laughs> but I do appreciate you all for watching my video and giving me time to um, get better and get back into the swing of things of just making videos and doing what I do best which is talking to a camera so I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next video Goodbye, y'all. This is my outro. Whoa, this is my outro. Because SM keeps flagging my videos for copyright. For copyright. Please, subscribe in the middle. It's gonna give you the best uh, video for you. And it'll give you a playlist. Probably like my vlogs or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna make a new intro and outro eventually. Don't know when. That'll be a project for a day when I'm off again. I don't know. <laughs>